Hello everybody, welcome back to Carpentry Practices 3. This is BCTI 204. Today's exercise, we're going to be working on installing some casing around a window, uh, an apron, and a stool. And we're also going to incorporate some jam extensions into that. Uh, just, we need a window. Oh, that was so tiring. Uh, now that we have a window, I'm going to run through all of our components that we're going to be using today for the exercise. So we have jam extension, we have our stool that I've nicely cut around the opening of the window, we have a piece of casing or trim, and then we have another piece of casing or trim but when we install it underneath the stool we call it an apron. Okay, so. Essentially, I'm going to walk you guys through it, but for now, the stool is where it all begins. And the reason for that is because it's a stool. Everything has to sit on top of the stool. Um, that's why I like to do the stool first. Some carpenters may try and do the jam extension first and then butt the stool up into it. Personally, I think there's, there's room for error here. But if you just run your stool into your framing and calculate the measurements accordingly, and you put your jam extension on top, in my opinion, it's a much better finish. Um, then we have our casing. Casing, get back over there. Casing sits on the stool and ties in the jam extension. Okay. And then lastly, we have our apron. The apron goes underneath and gives it that nice completed finish. Hey ladies and gentlemen, here we are back at our window. So I've temporarily tacked a piece of wood on here. Uh, it's not really permanent, it's just here as sort of like a measuring stick to show one way that you can come to the measurement of your stool. So as we know, we need um, we need a jam extension, of course. That's not going to happen until the stool is done. So for now, we'll just put this guy here representing the stool. Uh, so we're going to have our jam extension. We're going to have casing. And then it is, I was reading in the carpentry book, what they're asking is they, wanna, they want the stool to surpass the line of the casing two times the thickness of the casing. So here we're dealing with 5 8 uh, trim. So I've made a mark from the edge of this trim, inch and a quarter over, and that's going to be our uh, measurement to where we, to how much overhang the stool needs past the, uh, past the vertical portion of the jam. So I've also marked the center line, if you guys can see over here. Uh, I've pre-cut the length of my jam uh, sorry, my stool, and I've also marked the center line there. So lining up those center marks, if I've cut this right, the end of my stool should line up with that pencil mark I made there, and hopefully it looks right, and yes, it does. Okay, so we're going to take this guy off. We go this guy back and forth to get the nail out. And now I'm going to place my stool piece that I haven't notched yet. I'm going to line up my center mark here with my center mark on the window. And I'm going to place a pencil mark on the inside of the window opening. And another mark on the opposite side of the window opening. And I'm going to take a measurement on how deep the, um, the setback is from the window to our finished lumber. And I've got two and a quarter. So I'm going to take my piece of wood. I'm going to measure down two and a quarter. And this is the piece that I'm going to remove. This is what we want to keep. I've got my square handy. So I'm going to mark... 
precisely one side and then I will do the same here and that's what I'm gonna cut same thing on the opposite side square up. Make sure we're measuring the proper way. Don't get confused. This might be challenging to remember which side to keep and which side to throw away. So we're going to go two and a quarter, like so. Square our piece down. And then that's the piece that's going to go. So the piece that goes, it's always important to remember what side to keep your blade on when you're cutting, whether it's miter saw, circular saw, jigsaw, oscillating saw, like very important this is finished carpentry we want to make sure we keep our blade on the side of our waist so that we keep the piece that we want accurate I'll go cut this I'll be right back okay we're back with my stool piece I've made those cuts see where it says keep and the point of my arrow, I kept it. Very important. Accuracy is key. Measure three times, four times. Try to only cut once and make it a good one. So that should fit nice and snug in here. And it does. Beautiful. So stool goes first. Jam extension. Casing. And then we'll have our apron underneath to tie it all in. But before we start assembling all of our pieces, we need to do one more thing to our stool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna half round the top. So half round means we're gonna get our trim router. And there's another way to do this. And we're just gonna put a little half round on here just to make it look pretty and give it some nice detail. Alternatively, you could use a block plane, okay, just like a block plane that you would keep in your pouch, and you can just run it back and forth on the corner, take away that sharpness, and then sand it down to give you that corner. So let me pull out the router, throw the right bit in there, and then I'll bring you guys over. Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, we are about to use our trim router and put a half round, or sorry, a quarter round on the edge of this wood so I've set up the camera so you guys can see the whole process from start to finish I'm actually gonna turn this square edge into a quarter round like I've drawn here but to take it one step further because I think it looks really nice is I'm gonna turn my router around the corner and go back into the wall so that this whole top edge is gonna be curved down it's going to be nice and smooth. It's going to look fantastic. So I'm going to start up my router in just a second. Here is a quarter round bit. Mine happens to be quite used, but for the purposes of this demonstration, it'll be just fine. Okay, I've sunken in my bit to the correct line. I remember when we did power tools last semester, there is an indicator line on most bits, not all, and it tells you how deep to set in for the maximum strength and for the least amount of vibration. That's gonna give you a nice clean cut. So let's fire this up and see how it looks. nice and round on two sides so that's going to look great when that turns back into the wall this is going to look fantastic you'll see it when I bring it back over to the window 
here we are back at our window. I've zoomed in just so you guys can get a nice clear picture of what we're looking at. So I've we routered the uh, corner of our stool. We're going to place it inside. And now it looks like it's got some really nice detail to it. So let's just run through the steps again. So we've got stool, jam extension, casing, and then underneath is our apron. Now I've gone ahead and I've already put a uh, return miter on this because that's what everyone's going to be doing for the apron. Um, so the question is like where do we end the apron? So we can end it so that the casing above and this profile above are in line. We could step it in. I'm going to say it's personal preference. I would say we can do it near the line it up with the end or somewhere in between. But what you will get graded on is the distance between here and here and whether it's the same on both ends. And this goes back to learning how to center things properly. So if you've got an inch and a quarter here, you better make sure you have an inch and a quarter on the other side because it's going to be aesthetically different. It'll be wrong. Like if someone's looking at it, it's gonna, something's going to look different. It's not going to look uh, professional. It's not going to look proper. So if it's whether it's at the end, in line or in line, or whether it's somewhere in the middle of your casing, I'll leave it up to you. Just make sure that whatever you do on the right side of your window, you do exactly the same on the left side of your window. So we've already gone through in the crown and baseboard exercise how to do a return miter. I happen to have my glue with me today. So I'm going to give you guys a little demo on one way to do that, the way to do it. This happens to be the way I like to do my return miters. I like to get a little bit of glue on there and then I will spread it around. Make sure that I've got coverage on everything. I'll place my my mitered piece on. Make sure that's my return mitered piece. Make sure that is seated nicely. And now because the glue is still wet and it does take some time to dry, um, what I will often do is I'll get a piece of painter's tape and then just wrap it around the back. And that just kind of holds everything in place and I'll press it in and just make sure it's not going anywhere and then that'll hold your return miter in place until the glue dries and then you're gonna seat this underneath at your uh, predetermined location whether it's at the end or set in to the middle so now that I've cut the stool and I've prepared my apron with my return miters on each side. Now we can install the stool, install the apron, and install our jam extensions. I've got my 18 gauge brad nailer. Uh, make sure you have your glasses on. I'm gonna get nailing. extension on one side jam extension on the other side now I'm just gonna mention this personally as as a carpenter when I'm doing stuff like this it's important to know where you're gonna where you have forgiveness and all that means is this space here and this space up here doesn't ever really need to be tight 
because when you're inserting your top jam extension, this is the one that needs to be precisely cut from end to end. This is gonna get covered anyway with your casing. So although it's important to accurately measure, you do have some forgiveness here and here. So just something to keep in mind. This is the piece where it needs to be nice and tight in those corners. When we go around grading you, we're gonna make sure that this is tight, these seams are tight. So how you get there is entirely up to you, but as a hint, you've got forgiveness here and here. Got my stool. Oh, sorry. Apron, I should say. Now, what I've decided to do is measure the distance from the this profile line and this profile line, and that's what I cut my apron. So I'm gonna align my the cut of my apron to here cut of my apron to here, and that's where I'm gonna nail it. Now we'll move on to the casing. Okay guys, we're gonna get started on our casing. Now, rule of thumb, in carpentry is that when you're installing casing around any opening that you leave a 1 16th to a 1 8th gap of a reveal and that's the distance between the inside of your jam okay to the lip of your casing never want to see the casing flush to the jam it's just doesn't look right that way so what we do is we raise it up one eighth of an inch now the best way to measure and determine the height of your casing you could do it two ways the first way would be to hold your casing up here like I'm doing now one eighth of an inch Put a mark, measure from your stool up to this mark, and then do an inside miter uh, uh, this way. The problem is when you have an inside miter and this piece is already cut on an angle, you've got nowhere to hook your tape. Your tape's not really going to hook here to measure down, or it's going to be difficult for you to cut measure, uh, measuring from the bottom to the inside and then trying to figure out how you're gonna cut that on the miter saw. So another way to measure your trim in my opinion that I believe to be more accurate it involves a little bit of math but hey we're carpenters we do math um, and that's gonna be to keep in mind that we're gonna maintain a 1 8 of an inch reveal so we're gonna take a measurement from our stool up to the underside of our um, jam extension. And I'm showing 23 and a quarter. So we're going to take 23 and a quarter. We're going to write that down. 23 and a quarter. Then we're going to add 1 eighth of an inch for our reveal. And then we're going to measure the width of our casing. So the easiest way to do that is to flip it over where it's flat. And we've got two and a half inch casing that we're working with. Two and a half inches. So we can do the easy stuff first. So we know 23 and a quarter plus two and a half is 25 and three quarters. Now we need to add our one eighth. 
So our 1 8 on top of 3 quarters is 25 and 7 eighths of an inch. And we're going to measure that to the back of our casing now. So 25 and 7 eighths. At the bottom we're going to have a square cut that sits on the stool and at the top at this point here we're going to have 25 and 7 eighths. So let's make that cut. So I've made my cut. On one side we're square. That's going to sit on the stool and on the other side we have our miter. I went 25 and 7 eighths to the top. Let's see how that looks. Amazing. We nailed it. And that's what we're looking for. The inside of our miter lining up with our 1 8 reveal. Okay, I've cut my casing. I've got both my pieces. And it's just right. 1 8 above our jam. So I'm going to nail that in. Now we have our top piece to do. The top piece, you may want to just put your tape here and figure out what that measurement is and do the mitering on the top. Why would you do that when you can just hook right here? So if I wanted to measure it, so there's a couple ways to do it. So right now my measurement is 28 and a half. But I'm gonna go get my other piece of casing. I could miter it, measure over 28 and a half, miter it again, put it up there, maybe it'll fit, maybe I'll have to shave it a bit, maybe we'll have to add some more dap. Maybe I don't want to do any of those. Maybe I want to just try this, putting it upside down. Upside down? Yeah, it's kind of weird. But this is for the most accuracy, in my opinion. You're going to put a mark over here, and then one of those ticks that I showed you in the other video to show which direction the miter goes. I'm going to put another mark over here, right in line with this. We're going to just transfer that right on top with another line that goes like that. And then when I take it to the miter saw and cut those angles and I flip it around, it should work out really well. So I'm going to cut it, bring it back, and let's see how it goes. Hey ladies and gentlemen, I've cut my piece, I've mitered it along those marks that I made, let's see how it fits. Looks good to me. Now if this was your house, and even if it wasn't your house, we should always be gluing our miters. It's just good practice. We might not have an opportunity to do this in the lab. But I have an opportunity to do this here for you, so I want to show you. Wood does expand and contract, so it's important to add a little bit of glue just to help with that. Hey guys, thank you for watching. I'll give you a little close-up tour of how everything looks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you guys in the lab. Here you go. Stool, apron, same detail on the other side, 
and then we have our casing. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. We'll see you in the lab.